Okay, so what I do is I begin with, uh, let's see here. Let me pull up my dictionary. Uh, where are you? One second. Okay, let me start with this. There is happily gone. Okay. So the first thing I do Okay. The first thing I do is I'll go to my PDF of my Holy Quran. Okay, so up here, let me get this off the screen so you can see this as well. Okay, so you see up here where it says click to search? Mm -hmm. Okay, what I do is I will, give me one second, playing the DJ over here. Okay. So for example, in the click to search, if I type in the word orbit, it'll show me every place in Holy Crown where I can find the word orbit, okay? So I, I, I found it in Surah 36, ayat number 40. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that gives me the word orbit. Okay. okay. Then what I will do is, so, so, so the, right, you can write this as a cycle of action. My start, is I find I find the word in the Holy Quran. Okay. 3640 is where I find it. Okay. okay. Then what I will do is I have another uh, for this Quran. Okay. There is a website. And I'm going to show this to you. Is this it? That's it. Okay. Okay. You see my screen? Mm -hmm. You see where it says Quranic Arabic Corpus? Up here? Okay. 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 So this is a website it's called corpus.quran.com. Now you see where it says word by word right here? Mm hmm. Okay, I'll click that. It brings me to this screen. Then where it says chapter, I hit that. And I go to chapter 36. 36. I go to 36. Okay. I hit I uh, 40. Wow. Okay. Okay. Hit go. So then... I go, I go to 36 and 40, and then I look for the word, but it might not be the word orbit because the Arabic word has different translations. Okay. So, uh, but all in, and okay, so, okay, so floating in orbit. So here's the Arabic, you see the Arabic? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now when you look over here, this is the actual word in Arabic. So if you're going to use an Arabic dictionary, the, the one of the main things you have to do is study the Arabic alphabet. And the more you do it, it becomes second nature. So when I see this, I know that the root is going to be F-L-K. That's, that's what these Arabic letters are, F-L-K. Now, let me, okay, you see where it is? So this word is in blue? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a hyperlink. So if I hit that, is going to bring me to the root word. So here's the three Arabic letters. This is F, this is L, and this is K. Y'all with me? You're okay. reading from right to left? Ar Arabic goes from right to left. Okay. Okay. So then when you look, th so that's where I get my root word, F-L-K. Okay. So this... Now the 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 you'll see the, the lines above and below, those are your vowels. There's three vowels in Arabic. Okay. 
This over here tells me that this word is a noun. So at the same time, I'm, I'm learning the Arabic uh, alphabet. I'm learning Arabic grammar. And then this word down here is uh, the word float in Arabic. You look at this and you're like, okay, so what's the root word? If I hit this right here, yasbahuna is, is the, the Arabic word. But when I go up here, here's my root word. So you're going to use this to go into the dictionary. So this is S, this is B, and this is the hard H. There's two H's in Arabic. Okay. And then what happens is this shows you all the places in the Holy Quran where you can find this word. Surah 21, verse 33, 36, and 40, so on and so forth. Does that make sense? Okay. So then once I have once I have the, the, the verse in the Holy Quran and then I find this, the root word, then I go into my Arabic dictionary. And then I look up, the, I do the word clearing with my Arabic dictionary. This is my Arabic dictionary. If you can, you can see my Arabic dictionary. And as you can see, this one is 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 very beat up and actually falling apart. I got to actually get a new one. This one, this one's done. This is a pay. I got pages falling out. I mean, that's just how I, I use this every, every day, basically. So, brother Rashid. Does that kind of answer your question on how to find the, the words and how to do the word clearing? Well, I'm glad you recorded it. Yes. It just takes, so it just, it. It just yeah. takes practice. Right, yeah. I just wanted to see the methodology that you were using. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's, thank you for laying that out. Thank you for actually recording. Mm -hmm. So everything begins with the whole, the, 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 the Quran PDF. You actually do the word search and it shows you everywhere in the Quran to find that word. And then once I get all those ayats, then I go into Corpus Quran and then I can type in the specific ayats that'll give me the Arabic. And that's when you see me putting a, an ayat from the Holy Quran and then you see me um, doing the word clearing. This is exactly how I do it. And then what happens is when you go into the Arabic dictionary, and you look at all the, the you'll have the root word and then you have many, uh, many definitions or many words that describe that word in Arabic. You'll come across the terms that are used in Dianetics. You know, for example, when you look at the word, uh, the Arabic word kalasa, kalasa, matter of fact, let me show you something else while I'm here. And this will take, this is something else you can practice. Um, trying to think, where would that be? Um, uh, if you go to the bottom of what you're looking for, you see where it says Lane's lexicon? Okay, that is an online Arabic dictionary that you can use as you practice you and you you start to learn the alphabet. So I'll, I'll give you an example. If I hit Lane's lexicon, okay, it brings me to this screen. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, know, so I know the word khalasa, khalasa. The, the root is kha, uh, kha, l, and s. So I go over here. I know that this is the letter fa, A-H. Okay, so I hit that. And then it's probably hard to see because the, the, the font's really small. But if I go down to ha, and then I look at, I'm looking for the ha with an L. And again, it just takes practice, family. And we can all do this in a matter of, Days, ha, la, and then I'm looking for, and that's part of so dumb, I'm small. Mm -hmm. K H, I'm looking for K H L 
and then S. K A. Where are you at? You gotta be here. K H L and then S. Okay. So let me increase. There we go. Okay. So this is K H L and S. here okay now what's the significance of the word kalasa kalasa is the root word for purified ones does that make sense okay, okay. so now when i scroll down here i haven't used this one yet for this particular word but the word kalasa in Arabic, in Arabic is purified ones, but it also means, and I can show you this, the exact word in the Arabic dictionary, it says those who are clear, those who are clear. So the purified ones of the Holy Quran, when you actually clear the word in Arabic, the Arabic dictionary is going to bring you to the word, those who are clear. Now, I don't use this dictionary as much as my handheld because I, I actually like using this, this one. But if you look at the actual Arabic, okay. I'm gonna try to hold this up to the screen so you can see it. No, you're not gonna be able to see it. Okay. Um, but the word kalas in Arabic means to be or become free, to be liberated, to be redeemed, to be purged, to be refined, to be clear. Mm. Okay, so that's where we start marrying the, the, the words from the Holy Quran, I mean, from the Arabic dictionary, and we actually will start to find the terminology that's used in Dianetics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I hope that made it a little bit easier. I would recommend that you actually get an Arabic dictionary. This is for me, this is me personally, this is a hard read. Oh, wait, you see right here? Can you see my pointer? Oh, yes, mm -hmm. which signifies clear. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it should be up here too. Okay, now this is for you, Sister Peggy, for the, the Star Trek. <laughs> Do you remember the prophet or the sacred individual with regards to the Klingons? Um, his, um, I can't remember his name. I know who you're talking about. His name was Kalas, right? That's right, Kalas, yes. Uh -huh. so you see the, see the same Arabic, right? Kalas, Kalas, Kalas. Oh, Kalas, Kalas, okay. Kalas, it's the same, it's the same root word, it's the same consonants. One thing you'll notice as a Trekkie, and when you watch some of these science fiction movies, you'll they'll call each other, you know, they come they come up with these these what we might think is these crazy space names, right? Okay. Nine times out of ten, these words are actually rooted in Arabic. Mm. And because our people just don't know Arabic, they just think it's a name that someone made up. Remember, remember the, um, oh, it's not the, it's not the, uh, you have Spock and he is, what, what is Spock again? Spock is a um, Vulcan. He's a Vulcan. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's the other race that's a distant cousin to the Vulcans? The Romulans. The, the Romulan. Okay. Do you, re do you remember Tamalak? 
Kamaluk wanted to start a war with the with the Federation. Is that the one that was the okay? Yeah. The word Tamalak is Arabic. It's an Arabic. Oh, word. Okay. You know, so there's a there's a lot of symbolism in Star Trek, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And um, for those, has anyone watched the movie uh, Dune yet? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Have you the the old one or the new version? The new one. The new the version old. is is the, the, the new version. The new yes, they are both the bomb. Yes. But now, what's Paul's name? Paul was Paul chose a name for himself, right? Oh yes, Paul oh. Moadib. Moadib, right? Mm -hmm. Moadib means teacher in Arabic. Wow. Okay. And when you look at uh, the war, isn't the war called the Shihad? Mm -hmm. Yes. Where did they get that from? <laughs> so, a lot of the symbolism is in the movies. Is what I'm saying. That's why I love watching the movies. Okay, now. Let me go to this. Uh, let me see. Let me share my screen. Let me go here. Okay. Okay. Can you see the YouTube channel? Yes. Okay. So for example, I, this one, laying pressure on the mind was something we did, I think, two years ago. Okay, so now if I if I press this one, now I'm going to just freeze it. If I go down here where it has a little description, mm -hmm. and hit where it says where it says show more, mm -hmm. if I hit show more, everything is indexed by time. So for example, where it says at atmospheric pressure as as a uh, uh, atmospheric pressure as a counter effort. What we did was we took the, the study of the atmospheric pressure, but we looked at it from the perspective of Dianetics. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so now all you have to do, you might watch it through one time, you might take your notes, but you say, you know what, I want to go back and just study that one part. You can actually go back and click this and it'll take you to that. You just got to be in the world and not of it. That specific point. And so now all of the videos that are on there, as time goes on, I'm going to redo and index all the videos that are already there. But from this point forward, every video that I put on by Lost Grace, I'm going to index it so that as you watch it and you want to go back to specific points, you don't have to try to remember where did I did I see it here? Did I see it here? Nope. You can pinpoint it. And I'm going to index it based on each of these um uh titles on the powerpoints does that make sense yes sir to, okay. to make things a little bit easier you thank excellent powerful thank you wow absolutely very, yes. very welcome sister jocelyn i did see your hand up yes sir i was just going to ask um when you're when you're using the translations with the um arabic mm -hmm. um the the does that afford us that um proper uh, pronunciation of the Arabic word also? That takes practice. And, and I'm gonna tell you right now, my uh, my pronunciation is not perfect because I'm, I'm still learning. There, there's some letters in Arabic that are not in English and um, it just takes practice. However, there's a lot of good YouTube videos that you can pull up on Arabic pronunciation and they, they'll give you exactly um, how to pronounce it. I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe Brother uh, Sul, uh, Sultan Rahman has uh, some videos. His his pronunciation is beautiful. I, I love hearing his pronunciation, um, but that takes practice, you know. Oh, yes, sir. I was just, you know, like sometimes um, if you Google a, a, a word in English, it, it'll give you, like if, you, if you're looking at a word, you don't know how to say it, they'll tell you. So I was just wondering, does it do the same? with the Arabic, I was just curious. If, if you do Google Translate, and if I think if you type in the word in Google Translate and hit the play button, it will it will do the pronunciation for you. Yes, uh, sir. But now here's another thing. Those that have what's called the Oculus, that, that virtual reality headset, 
there is a thing you can download called Mondly, M-O-N-D-L-Y, and it'll actually teach you, um, you can learn different languages through this VR headset. And the way it's set up is that if you pronounce a word and you don't pronounce it wrong, it won't let you go forward. I don't know how it detects your speech, but it'll give you it'll give you different scenarios, and then you have to repeat certain things, and it'll pass you if you pronounce it correctly, and if you don't pronounce it correctly, it 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 won't pass you. And then at the end of that segment, you get a grade, but you can always repeat that grade if you choose to. And there's about from, I think there's twenty to thirty different languages on it. There's Arabic, there's Swahili, uh, Chinese, Japanese. Um, um, I have it, I haven't used it in a while, but if you actually want to learn the languages, it has Spanish, it has French. It's another tool to use to learn because eventually we have to learn to use the Arabic because eventually none of us are going to be speaking English. Yes, sir. Not so is that M-O-D-L-Y? M-O-N-D-L-Y. Let me see if I oh, can. Oh, my D. Okay. Yes, sir. And I'll pull that up real quick so you can see it as well. Um, Okay, here's an example of what it looks like. Okay, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. sir. So right there, it'll it'll give you it'll give you the the dialogue, like je, je m'appelle, je m'appelle. My name is okay. So that's that. Je m'appelle is just French for my name is. This is Enchanté. Enchanté. Okay. You see how it said ding? He said Enchanté. Enchanté. Uh huh. And it said ding. It means you pronounced it right. Allez-vous? Bien, à vous. Je suis heureuse de l'entendre. D'où venez-vous? I guess my accent picks up ah, but I. So that's just the, one of the apps you can use, but there's there's many different languages you can learn. And and then the more you do it, the more you become fluent with it. Modern tech, modern equipment allows the line to move quicker, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right, family. Uh, uh, do we have to play games? We we need to we have to have that thing that play games. Oh, I play games every day. That's how that's, oh, I didn't ask you. Do you? I get it. Do we have to play games? <laughs> no, that, that is that itself. It, it, it's real. That is it. Isn't like a game. It's actually oh. you're having a conversation. It's different scenarios where you're having a conversation with someone. Okay. It's just the way that it does it. It's it's hitting again both sides of the brain. I guess you can say, but it's done in such a way that it's entertaining. So it kind yes. of keeps okay. the interest. Okay. But um. I do use my Oculus to play games. I, I do. I I do my martial arts. I do my boxing. I do my shooting range. I, I fire my M16s. I do all that stuff on my on my Oculus. Anyway, okay. Now let us. I'm gonna pull up. It's not a long PowerPoint. However, I think it might be good just to get us started. And there, so here's what we're gonna do. There's some information I'm gonna present just to kind of give us like an introduction. There is a, I think two or three videos and each of the videos are only like maybe a minute to a minute and a half long. So what I'm gonna do once we go through the information and again, I apologize if it doesn't flow. I was just trying to have something together so we can have it for today. We're going to watch the video, the first video clip, and then I'm just going to throw some questions out to hear your cognitions. Okay. Everyone with me? Yes. Yes, sir. So this this whole this concept comes from uh wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold, hold, stop it. Brother Wahid. Assalamu alaikum, sir. I just saw your name in the I just saw your name in the chat, Brother Wahid. Please forgive me for not sending you the greetings earlier. 
And if you can't come off mute, then that's fine. We're just thankful that you're here. Um, I, think, I think that's everyone. I'd like to recognize everyone. Okay. Let's see. Let me pull this, pull this, and pull this. So this comes from, this is from the good doctor. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So this comes from this comes from Brother Wadud. He had asked the question, but I was going through my notes yesterday and I, I saw the note that I, had, that I had written down. You had asked the question about orbits. So I wanted to make it a point to study this to see where it would bring me. And I found some good information as to how we can use orbits, the study of orbits, as a demo kit. Now, all of this goes back to what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan spoke about in A Torchlight for America, pages 48 to page 51, where he says, and I'm paraphrasing, the one of the main things we want to do is we want to put a lot at the center of our education, correct? So we put a lot at the center of our education, and then whatever we study, we're actually studying an aspect of our own self, correct? Yes. Okay, because yeah. the, minister, the minister says, that we are the microcosm of the macrocosm. So whatever we're studying on the outside is really us studying different aspects of our God nature. Asalaamu Alaikum, Brother Eric, good to see you. You're still connecting. Wait till he finishes connecting. So in the study of orbits, the actual topic in physics or science is called orbital mechanics. I sound like Brother Eric. Oh, alaikum salam. I finally get it. Then. That's good to see you. Hey, then good to see you. <laughs> so or, when you study orbits, you're studying what's called orbital mechanics, which is a branch or a part of a a science called astrodynamics. Does that make sense? Everyone with me? Don't don't let, don't let these word, don't let these words uh, drop your tone level. No, I just wasn't sure if I understood what the astrodynamic meant. That's why I didn't answer you. Oh no, no, this is for everyone. But astrodynamics. Okay, so when we look at the word astro, we're dealing with stars. Yes. And when we deal with dynamics, we're looking at movement. Okay. And so what we're going to do, it might be briefly, only because I'm, my slides are limited, but I, I firmly believe because I'm sitting in the circle of gods today, and there's 24 today. So because we're sitting in the circle of the gods, that I believe that you all will have your own individual cognitions as we go through this, and you're going to see Our own. some amazing things, okay? We're going to look at orbital mechanics as a demo kit to gain an understanding of self, of Allah, and the universe. Y'all ready for this one? See, this, yeah. is right, this is right yeah. of Sister Peggy's uh, alley being on the Starship Enterprise. So I want to I want to start out with the word mathematical theology, and this is just the way that I perceive this term, mathematical theology. When you look at the word mathematics, this is the basic definition. Mathematics is the science of numbers and their operations, interrelations combinations, this is right from Merriam-Webster Dictionary, 
generalizations and abstractions and of space configurations and their structure, measurement, transformations, and generalizations. And that's exactly the way it's worded in Merriam-Webster dictionary. So mathematics is really taking numbers and using them in so many different ways that you able to understand everything in the universe. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Then when you look at the word theology, you're looking at the study of God, God's relation to the world, the study of religious faith, practice, and experience. So when you combine these two terms together, you get a mathematical theology, which is the study of God, his relationship to the world, and religious faith, practice, and experience through the science of numbers, correct? Correct. Okay, so now, to take this a little bit deeper, if I look at the definition for mathematics, then mathematical theology is going to allow me to understand Allah, Allah's relationship to the universe, and Allah's relationship to me or us. And then when you look at the fact that it deals with faith, practice, and experience, then that leads me to believe, this is just how I perceive it, that as I study mathematics, I'm going to learn more about myself and my relationship with Allah, his relationship with the universe, and that as I learn about mathematics and science and numbers and operations and the combinations of numbers and how the numbers relate to one another, and we use the word equation or formulae, these ways of understanding mathematics is going to teach me also about my religion because Islam is mathematics and mathematics is Islam, correct? Yes. Yes, sir. So as we study mathematics, we're actually learning about our religion. We're learning about, well, no, not our religion, because Islam is given to us as a religion. We're learning about our way of life. Correct. Okay. So then what happens is as we study mathematics, when we study astrodynamics, we're really studying mathematics as applied to the movement of interstellar uh bodies correct yes so everything we look at in the universe is actually teaching us about our islam does that make sense mm -hmm. yes okay. sir so what happens is at least for me if if i have this mindset that when i study something i'm looking okay how is this going to teach me about allah how is this going to teach me about my relationship with allah and his relationship with me how can, if this is going to teach me aspects about myself, how can I put myself in the subject matter to learn things about me? Because as I learn about God, I'm learning about me. And as I learn about me, I'm learning about God, correct? Yes, sir. So, yes, then, sir. so then everything I'm studying becomes a self-study. So I'm not just studying a subject in order to pass a test. I'm studying astrodynamics to gain a knowledge of self. I'm studying orbital mechanics to gain a knowledge of self. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, sir. So when the minister said in that video about mathematics, he says that we are the microcosm of the macrocosm. Everything that's outside is on the inside. Everything that's on the inside is the outside. Everything I'm studying, I'm gaining a knowledge of who I am as an individual in the, in the likeness of Allah, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, if that's what mathematical theology is, then what would be the theology of orbital mechanics? <laughs> How can I take orbital mechanics and learn about Islam? How can I take orbital mechanics and learn about me? How is, how is that a self-study? OK, one of the key things I want us to do as we're going through as we're going through this, be aware of statements or questions that come to your mind as we're talking and write down those statements slash cognitions and write down those questions. 
Because as we go through the subject matter and you're aware of the inner dialogue, remember the self-accusing spirit teaches, guides, and reproves. That's what the, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches, right? Yes. Then as we're going through this study, you, you will hear, and it's not because you're schizophrenic, but you will hear as if a teacher is speaking to you from within yourself about this subject matter. Does that make sense? Perfect. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Be aware of the statements that come to mind and be aware of the questions that you that will come from within. Because if you look at the word question, the root word in question is the word quest, correct? Yes. yes. And the word quest describes a journey in search of something of importance, correct? Yes. And the suffix T-I-O-N means an action or a process. So when you ask questions, this is a spiritual and a mental journey that's going to take you to other things within yourself, within the subject matter that you study. And really the journey is an inner one. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. Clearly. So when you look at orbital mechanics, orbital mechanics and astrodynamics is coming under the same topic. Um, <clears throat> so when we combine these terms, we're doing the same thing. We're taking problem number 13 and we're looking at it like an equation. So for example, if I say mathematics, the word mathematics encompasses hundreds of subdivisions of topics, right? So if I were to say the word arithmetic, arithmetic is mathematics, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so if arithmetic is mathematics and mathematics is arithmetic, but then by the law of substitution in mathematics, that tells me that if I look at problem number 13, where it says Islam is mathematics and mathematics is Islam, I should be able to substitute the word arithmetic. After learning arithmetic, which is Islam, and as Islam is arithmetic, it stands true, and you can always prove it no limited time, but then you have to learn to use your arithmetic theology in its proper term. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Have, have I confused anyone? Or does that does that kind of, does that raise the tone a little bit? Okay, that means take problem number 13, you can take any level of mathematics and put it into the word mathematics. If I say calculus, after learning Islam is calculus and calculus is Islam, that means the more I study calculus, the more I should learn about Allah, myself, and my faith. Does that make sense? Yes. So the many branches of mathematics really all of those branches are just demo kits to teach us many branches of ourself and our, 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 our faith tradition and our relationship to Allah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the same, same concept is we take the word orbital mechanics, we substitute it. So after learning Islam is orbital mechanics and orbital mechanics is Islam. After learning Islam is astrodynamics and astrodynamics is Islam. We're doing the same thing. We're changing the way that we perceive mathematics so that we're taking away the stigma of it because we have what we call these mathematical engrams, correct? Yes. We have these. So if, if we have a fear of mathematics, then as soon as mathematics is mentioned, what happens to our tone? Okay, but if we say mathematics and we say, wait, I am mathematics, mm -hmm. what happens to the tone? Tone goes up. Goes up. Okay, so, so if astrodynamics is the study of the motion of artificial bodies moving under the influence of gravity for one or more large natural bodies, and this includes maneuvering, uh, maneuver planning of spacecraft in orbit, methodology to determine where objects are in space and spacecraft attitude, we're gonna we're gonna kind of we're gonna try to unpack this to see how we can take this concept of astrodynamics but relate it to self. Everyone with me? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Where do we begin? We begin at study guide number four. And if you look at the bottom of where it says facts, it says the planet Earth is inclined on its axis at approximately 23 degrees, 30 minutes to the plane of its own orbit. This inclination, along with its rotation on its axis and its revolution around the sun, makes life forms as we know them here. If the Earth were to alter its motion, it would lose its balance and leave its orbit. Now, that one little paragraph has is so mathematical and there's so much in it. Let's unpack that for a minute. <clears throat> uh, I would highly recommend we all have access to a dictionary, whether we have a, the book or we have something on our phone or on our computer, because we're gonna do some word clearing here to show how this study guide by itself could take us deeper into the study of self and astrodynamics, okay? So let's look at <clears throat> someone, if you can pull up the word plane, P-L-A-N-E. Look up the word plane. Anyone got it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Whoever wants to go ahead, read read the definitions for the word plane. Now, <laughs> one thing Brother Jabril said many years ago, when you, he talked, and I'm paraphrasing, he talked about using a dictionary. He 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 recommended the first first couple of definitions will be superficial, and then as you go deeper into the definitions you're gonna find some real deep meanings that will take you on another journey, okay? So let's start with the top definition for the word plane and let's see where that takes us. Go, uh, go ahead, whoever has it. Who has it? It says undecorated, uh, unobstructed. Mm -hmm. um, clear hmm, there's a good one okay <laughs> and then it says belonging to the masses huh. i'm on i'm on the computer i'm not in my book okay anyone else it, it says an extensive area of level of rolling trees country a broader okay. looking expanse okay. something free from artifice ornament or ex extraneous matter as an adverb is a plain manner without obscurity of ambig ambiguity, ambiguity. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely plain, then it goes into a verb, plain, plain, complain, no. That's what I got. Okay, so, yeah. so, one, so one good one is free from matter. Free from, basically free from stuff, right? Yes. Okay. So now if we were to look at that, well, no, I'll wait till we get to it. Let's let's read some more definitions. There's a specific definition I'm looking for that's going to take us to the next, the, up the next gradient. Uh, who else has the word plane? P-L-A-N-E. I have some. I, oh, go ahead. I have a level of existence, thought, or development. Yes. Level of existence thought or development. What else do you got, Sister Belinda? Uh, I don't have anything else different than what okay. Sister Red. So now, so you have the word thought. You gave us thought in existence, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and then Sister Shayla gave us free from matter. So now, and then she gave us the word clear. So now when you look at, if we if we just look at that real quick, free from matter and clear and a level of existence, what are we describing right now? A clear. We're, we're thinking about a clear or a level of thinking, correct? Right. Okay, go ahead, Sister Melody. 
Oh, well, one of the ones I had was a, a flat or level surface. Also a level of dignity, character, high moral plane. Hmm. Okay. So it sounds like the word plane, it could, if we took it on another level, the word plane could represent a plane of thought, correct? Okay, a plane of thinking. Okay, so now. Brother, Brother Luke, man. Yes, ma'am. I find a definition that says plane, lacking special feature or quality, basic. Plane. Just, what, how, how, how's that word being spelled? Uh, uh, P-L-A-I-N. Okay, so, so that would be called, I think that would be called a homonym. Words that sound the same but are spelled differently. Okay. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's a homonym. So we're we're looking for P L A N E. A N E. And that's the thing about the English language. You have these all a hundred words that okay. sound the same, but you got a word like tough. It's not even F. There's no F in the word tough. Richardson. Really? I think I really? Mean that. Psychotic has a P, but there's, there's but you don't pronounce it. You know. Anyway, that's a whole nother <laughs> subject, yes. Okay, but so now look look at look at look at the first sentence here. The planet Earth is inclined on its axis at approximately 23 degrees, 30 minutes to the plane of its own orbit. Now let's look, look at that for a split second. What is the significance of the fact that the earth is inclined on its axis? What does that axis permit the earth to experience? To rotate. To rotate it, it allows it to rotate. Yes, that's a key word. Rotate on its axis. But what else? If you, if you change that axis, what would you change on the planet? Um, the the rotation of the balance, the balance. Yeah, the, the balance. balance. The seasons. All in. You wouldn't have the season. Okay. So right. the so in other words, the Earth is in such a mathematical position with regards to its location, ninety three million miles from the sun. Correct. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Its location, its distance, and its size that it permits mm -hmm. light, life, and power to hit that, to yeah, hit that planet. That's personal issue with rotating chart. To cause it to rotate and to right. give life to every aspect of that planet because of its inclination based on its plane of existence. Does that make sense? Okay. Is it is access causing that, Brother Luke Mon? You causing know, the way what? that it's causing it to be able to give to all of the planets because of the way the axis, you know, is sitting. It's not sitting straight up. It's kind of like in an angle, right? Mm -hmm. If it was if it understand that the, the tilt of the earth, because right yeah. now it's summertime, it's summertime above yeah. the equator, but it's winter beneath. And okay. when it's winter up here, it's summertime beneath. So if it, if it stayed, if it's axis was like this, it would change the dynamic of the environment. Yes, sir. Okay. So in other words, the planet Earth is situated in the plane of its orbit in such a way that it is in harmony with the sun. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. And when you look at the second line here, it says this inclination, along with its rotation on its axis and its revolution around the sun, makes life forms as we know them here. Then it says if the earth were to alter its motion, it would lose its balance and leave its orbit. So the so the thing I want us to look at is when you look at the word orbit. The plant, each planet 
is in a particular orbit, which means every planet has its own individual specific relationship to the sun, correct? Mm -hmm. And if you were to change the arrangements of the planets, it would throw the whole solar system out of balance. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So in other words, each planet is in harmony, not only with the sun, but with the other planets, because it stays in its own lane. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Harmony. Yep. Harmony. So every planet has its own orbit or its own purpose. Does that make sense? Did you say surface? Each planet has its own purpose. Purpose, okay. Okay. Right. Its purpose and its orbit. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to translate that to is, it says if the earth were to alter its motion, it would lose its balance and leave its orbit. So leave its orbit and lose its balance. How do you, how do you translate that into the tech of dynamics of losing balance and leaving an orbit? How, how can we look at that dynamically? Sister Jacqueline, you're on mute. I was just moving my, my mouth. I just said a tech, it would be a loss. It'll be a loss. It'll be a loss. Could we say leaving its orbit? Could we, we say that it's it's dramatizing? Yes, sir. If it's if it's, it's losing its balance, could we say aberrated? Mm -hmm. Okay, now watch this. If a planet leaves its orbit, it alters its motion, it leaves its orbit, or it loses its balance and leaves its orbit. If any of us here are not clear, that means on some levels, we still have some aberrations, correct? Yes. Absolutely. That means there are some things in our life that cause us to alter our motion, Yes. It causes us to leave our orbit. Yes. And it causes us to lose our balance, correct? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yes. So could we then say these things are happening because we're not living according to our purpose? Correct. Yes. I believe that. So our individual orbit. The, the study of orbits could be a demo kit to represent that each one of us has to find what our purpose is. Yes. Why are we here? Good now, question. Ms. Go ahead. Go ahead. Who's, someone's going to say something? No, sir. Okay. So each one of us has a reason for being here, May 2023. There's a reason why we were written in the history to be present in this day and time and to assist the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in doing the work that we're doing, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, we, are, sir. we are all like planets yes. revolving around the sun that has risen in the West. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. oh, okay. But what happens is if you, if you look at us as believers, we're average because we're trying to get in other people's orbits. <laughs> What we need to do is get out, find out what our lane is and get in it. Right, right, <laughs> right, 100% right. And see, when, when you get into someone else's orbit, what happens, it, it, it pulls out of the orbit and then it messes up the whole system. Right, it's out of balance. It's not, yes, ma'am, Sister Melly, it's out of balance. You know, it, from the medical standpoint, you know, what happens when the... Uh, in the circulatory system, if you get too much fat in the circulatory system, doesn't that throw the cardiac system out of balance? Most definitely. You know? So in, in, from, from an anatomical standpoint of the body, the whole body wants, as Brother, uh, brother Dr. Wadu uh, described before, the body wants homeostasis or balance. Right. But what unbalances one thing eventually over time will imbalance the whole body. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so can you see how astrodynamics, the study of orbits, the study, so now if you apply this and look at the different uh, problems in a problem book, 
that talk that ask the questions about the different planets. What is their, it gives us the diameter. What is their circumference? How many days does it travel in one year? All this can teach us different things about ourselves if we use those planets as demo kits, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead, Sister Jocelyn. Um, yes, sir, as you were speaking, Brother Lukman, um, about having our purpose, I was also going to offer that even if we like might know our purpose or even if we might be living our purpose, we also have to qualify it by doing it for the glory of Allah. Like, you know, Mr. Farrakhan shared with us on his birth anniversary that his life was not personal. And we see that his total life was, you know, serving Allah and his pe people. So when, even if we learn our purpose, when we start living our purpose or doing our purpose, we still have to um, make Allah the center. And so that there will be balance because we can be doing it, still be in balance. Mm -hmm. it, and, and here's the statement that comes to mind as you said that. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, do no good seeking gain. So we shouldn't do things with the thought of I'm doing this because I want to get paid. You know, I mean, we have to work, you know, everything's for real. You know, we, you know, we put our trust in a lot, but we also have to tie our camel. But if money becomes our focus, you know, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has said that seek ye first the kingdom and all its righteousness, and then all things will be added unto you. So go ahead, sister. Yes. Um, I was reading and closing the gap how the minister's heart was shaped even while he was a child and all he wanted to do was heal his people and help his people. If it, it, was, if it was through music, you know, as long as he was healing his people and how he wanted to be a doctor and his teacher told him that, you know, they won't accept you and your people won't believe in your skills and how uh, trying to find a way to get to his people, to help his people. It's like, that's all he's been trying to do, even as a child. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes you, you have to find which way you're gonna do it you, to help your people. Mm -hmm. And he, he found a way when he found the messenger. So that's what I was thinking about as you all were talking and trying to find what you were really, sent here to do mm -hmm. you know yes sir there, there is what I was... oh go ahead sis i'm sorry so i said that's what i was thinking about as you all were talking yes, yes sir, go ahead go ahead brother timothy yeah i was, I was sister made me think of something um when in our lessons it talks about how planets are made and grown from the beginning mm. and that's yeah. that's what that's what i think about with the minister he was actually even in the womb uh, he was his. He was being prepared for his assignment, and um, so it, it was in his actual making the prayers that his mother was saying, and how he can go back and think about um, or bring forth to us what his mom was thinking while he was in the womb. Hmm. You know, that's um, that's something that for us to look at too. Um, that he is, it's like he's that's something like uh, like he like he he's been in. Um, I don't know if I wouldn't say reverie, but could be that he had to go back to that point where his mom was uh, experiencing those things mm -hmm. and he was able to pull that up to know what she was experiencing, how she was feeling. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm just thinking about how, you know, planets are made and grown from the beginning. And we're uh, even in our womb, we're being groomed for our assignment. Mm -hmm. so. so then so then it would make sense that even the suffering that we went through. And again, to get more data on this, I highly recommend the, the videos by Brother Jabril, Self First, Part One, Part Two, and Part Three, that everything that happened uh, in our past, in our childhood, actually has prepared us to do what we're doing today. We had, if we change any, yes, if we change any one thing, we don't, know, we don't know what the outcome would be. Yes, sir. You know, so there's a reason why we had to go yes, through it was preparing us for something. Okay. Right. Let's go back to this. Okay. 
So this, this, this second paragraph in study guide number four, can we see how we can extract some other, we, we, you know, we take, took the study guide, we we're able to go a little bit deeper in the study of orbits. Yes. Uh, Brother Wadud, how are we doing so far with this topic? He might be busy. Okay, we'll keep it moving. Okay, let's look at the word orbit. The word orbit is a path described by one body in its revolution about another. So now if we look at orbit with regards to our purpose, then what would this other body be that we should be orbiting around? What should be at the center of our orbital path? God. Yeah, because study guide number, was it, I think it's study guide number 10, is it? A lot yeah. is the true center of everything. Mm -hmm. So then everything yeah. should be to keep ourselves in orbit around Allah. Which again is we do what we do not to orbit around Benjamins. We don't orbit around money. We shouldn't orbit around food. You know, we can go right down the list of things that, and that's that's and those other things that we make our focus is what does what takes us out of our orbit, causes an imbalance, and then we we fall out of our orbit, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. But orbit also is a range or sphere of activity or influence. Now, this definition specifically is going to become more relevant when we when we watch the first video clip. So what would so if the planet Earth has its distance from the sun, its inclination is mathematically uh, in harmony with the sun to give light, life, and power to all aspects, to give the seasons of the earth to all different parts of the planet. If we look at that, and then we look at orbit also means a range or sphere of activity or influence, could we say that the reason why we might be taken out of our orbit or why we have that imbalance that takes us out of our orbit is based on a range or sphere of activity or influence that's counterproductive yes okay so yes. a range of activity could be a type of knowledge that we're studying that's really beneath us we need something that's gonna um and I, and i remember seeing this in a book called have you ever heard of 48 laws of power mm -mm. have you ever, i mean the book 48 laws of power yes sir yes sir well, there's one book called The 50th Law. The 40 Laws of Power was written by, I think his name is Robert Greene. Sister Peggy, you're Green. Robert Greene. Robert Greene, okay. Yeah. He co-authored a book with 50 Cent called The 50th yes, Law. Did. And one of the things that is said in The 50th Law, and this is what 50, everyone here knows who 50 Cent is. He had mentioned that sometimes, and I'm paraphrasing, he says, you know, sometimes he'll read a book that is that is above his understanding because it, it stretches it'll stretch the mind you know some of us have to take the leap of faith and go ahead and study algebra or study trigonometry we have to take that leap of faith but again as soon as you say the word trigonometry tones the tone scale goes down case gain it drops <laughs> So we have to take the we have to attempt to take on subject matters that we think are difficult. And what it does is, is in the language of the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, it stretches the diameter of our thinking, correct? And if you stretch the diameter yes, of someone's sir. thinking, what happens to the circumference of their activity? It expands. It expands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some of us never thought today that we would be studying astrodynamics, correct? Correct, correct. <laughs> <Is this the laughs> yes. But now, but now, how many of us, in just a little bit that we've that we've taken in, 
have the mindset of thinking, I can do this. That's called, that's called postulate processing. If something is int introduced on a gradient level, we can understand it. Why did we have trouble in school? Because sometimes teachers, they taught with too steep a gradient and you couldn't teach yeah. them. Yes. Yes, sir. And some Thank had the know. mindset that, well, I got mine. You, you know, you, you got to get it. Yeah. You just have to keep up. You gotta, you're not applying yourself. You're not doing the work. No, no teacher. First of all, you're condescending. Your te teaching methods are out of date. And you're, you're not teaching in a way where it can be a gradient that can be easily digested by the students. Does that make sense? Perfect. Yes, it makes a lot. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Brother Luke, man, I yes, can't raise my hand. I'm driving, but right okay. now, what, what, after, this, what, after, what, this, after this class, I'm almost being beaten by Sister Anya. I feel that I can walk through a wall of fire. <laughs> <laughs> my tone went up. Well, just make sure you have on your fire equipment, sister, because <laughs> actual facts will come back to haunt you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, brother of mine. Yes, ma'am, sister Denise. I always felt like, I, you know, there was no subject matter I could not learn. It all depends on who's teaching it. You yes, know, if they can take it and, and break it down. As minister say, if you have a PhD, Mr. Farrakhan say you should be able to talk to people on that level, even down to the kindergarten, mm -hmm. because you know how to how to bring it on on any level when you're talking to people, and that's what you do when you talk. And I say, what? <laughs> you know, it's like it's that simple. Yeah, it's, and, it's uh, that simple. It's like, who taught me? Uh, or who shot a needle in my head? I mean, mm. you know, mm -hmm. either, either either way, it's not just sticking a needle in the children's head; it's our head as well. Mm -hmm. You know, as you are adults, because of the way that you come at people, are you coming to give to them? Are you are you coming to just show them what you learned? Yes, ma'am. You know, that makes a lot of difference to me when you're teaching. Are you giving them something that they can take away? Or are you just, look, look what I know. <laughs> look what I've learned. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And see, me personally, Thanks. yes, ma'am, thank you. Me personally, in, in the individuals that I've had a chance to work with, some of which are, are in the Zoom meeting, when I hear someone's tone level goes up because they understand a concept that they at one time thought that they couldn't do, and now they do it, Where's where's my where's my PEMDAS scientist at? Where's PEMDAS scientist at? She, she knows what I'm talking about. Is she still here? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's yes, that's sir. the PEMDAS scientist right there. Sister Shayla is the algebra scientist. When I when I hear when I, I and uh, and and Sister Anya, uh, I, I hope Sister doesn't mind me uh, putting her out there like this, but. In, in a short time, I mean, I can hear Sister Anya's voice has changed over the course of the past year. And I'm not, it's, I'm not trying to take credit for it, but when I hear this change in tone, when someone now believes, matter of fact, what was it that Sister, Sister Anya, what was it, you had said something last, the last class, you started going into something. What was it that you started going into with science? You with me, Sister Anya? Oh. Even in odd numbers. Maybe she can't hit. Yes, sir. But just for you to bring up that, you brought up that subject matter of even in odd numbers. I'm telling you, that my tone level goes through the roof just hearing the type of dialogue that to know that people are, are believers are doing studies outside of class now. It's just it, for me. It's a wonderful thing. I I I I love to see that. That just that just brings me so much joy to hear the believers speaking about mathematics and science because that's that's why I do what I do. I want to I want to get individuals to appreciate mathematics and science 
and to have the same, if not more of an appreciation than I do. Because I, I mean, I, I do math and science every, every day. But to hear the tone level go up in individuals when you talk about math or science, to me, that's that's just one of the greatest things to, to hear. Um, anyone else before we go forward? All right, let's keep Brother going. Brother Lukma. Yes, Sister Jaslyn. <laughs> okay, I just want to offer, as you were um, asking a question, it made me think about the, the blessing that we have in the beauty of having a master teacher who is guiding us to change the paradigm because mm -hmm. as, as he's showing us how to make whatever we learn relevant to us, when mm -hmm. it's relevant right. to us, it's easier for us to grasp. And yeah. it's bringing us closer to um, yeah. the elevation because you know we're being taught by, by people that only have one degree of mathematics. But as we learn that we are mathematics and everything, we're going to get closer to you know evolving into um, understanding the higher degrees of mathematics mm -hmm. and that that's the beauty that I'm that I'm that I'm receiving from how you're you know how he's got it you to instruct us it's 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 like it's it's elevating us because I can make it relevant to me and if I can see myself and study myself and if I'm the original man then I'm going to inshallah eventually learn to master higher degrees of mathematics yes ma'am yes ma'am and, and here's the thought that comes to mind as you're speaking, Sister Jocelyn. Have we not been taught that during the 20 year period, we're going to learn higher levels of mathematics and science? Yes, sir. And we were taught yes, that we would be taught by the scientists, correct? Yes, sir. <laughs> and, and Sister uh, and Mother Tynetta has said on one occasion that we will, I think it was either Mother Tynetta or the minister said that we will learn the peaceful application of the atom. Has anyone heard I don't that before? That. I don't remember that, sir. Okay. That, I know that's somewhere in unveiling number 19. I will get the actual facts on that so we will have the receipts on that. But now here's another thought. If we're taught that a law does not change the condition until we change our own condition, is it possible? I, I can't confirm this. This is just a cognition. This is just my thought process. Is it possible that if we begin to study mathematics and science, is it possible that the scientists could teach us the new levels through our own being? In other words, I feel like it is. Say again. I said I feel that it is possible, but that's it, a that's it, a deep uh, thought. It, it's, it's something to think about. For some of us, we might think we're going to be taught by the scientists. We think we're going to be in a room in a classroom with the scientists. But what if that's not what it means? What if it means that we have to put forth the effort to now go study mathematics and science and the cognitions that come to us, the thoughts that come to us and the questions that come to us, what if that is the teaching of the scientists to us? But we have to, see, we think it's gonna be some mystery God teaching where we get in the classroom with a scientist in abracadabra, we become scientists. No, I don't believe that's the case. I believe we have to put forth the effort to do the work to study the different levels of mathematics and science and study them based on our orbit. Study them based on our plane of existence. Study them based on, we might not all wanna study trigonometry. Some of us might just, algebra might be, or geometry might be our plane. Some of us might go specifically to study physics or thermodynamics, or we might get to the point where we, we might study all of it. But based on our plane of existence and, and based on our distance from the sun, we study mathematics and science based on what satisfies our soul. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. So when we find out, okay, what do I want to study today? Okay, like for the next couple of days, I know I'm going to be studying orbital mechanics. Because now my, my tone level is I can't wait to go study this subject matter to learn about myself, learn about Allah, and learn about Islam. So now the main thing with studying any concept or subject is you have to have the tone level to do it, right? If the tone is low, you don't want to study it. But now as I study it, as I have these 
uh, L. Ron Hubbard calls them a theta facsimile. A theta facsimile is in our language, we could probably call it a revelation. But when you, ha has anyone had any cognitions or questions that have come to mind that they have written down as, as we have had this discussion? Yes. Okay. Now, what if those cognitions or what if those questions, what if, just what if, the possibility, what if that was something that was used by a scientist to teach you something deeper into the subject that we're already studying? I'm just saying it's a possibility. I don't know. I can't answer that question. I'm not a scientist. But does that kind of all make sense? We have to put forth the effort to study. And then based on what we study, we're going to receive a higher level of that frequency of thought, I believe. Sister Jocelyn and then Sister Anya. Brother Lukman, as you were speaking, it, it made me think about um, Master, I mean, Master Muhammad and the Honorable, Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad establishing the University of Islam and why he called it the University of Islam because the the university is our classroom. Mm -hmm. So wherever Allah guides us, and then that's, that's you know, we're just gonna study it, but for the benefit of the whole. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just, um, I guess I'm bearing witness to what you're saying. Um, that's all, that's all I wanted to share. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Jasmine, praise be to Allah. Sister Anya. You're on mute. There you go. Um, it, it's it's um, I guess really funny that you should bring that up again about um, the uh, class, um, the twenty years of study and the scientists, um, and what I had brought up last time, because I had another um, I, don't, I won't say cognition, but just another. Well, I guess it could be a cognition, um. But I'm, re I'm noticing how the more and more we go through these different sessions um, with the, you know, pairing up the Dianetics with the, um, all, all of the other studies of, of the universe and in a mathematical way, how it's causing me and I probably um, more of us as well, but it's causing me to think of things in a more mathematical way. And another example was the other day I was reading an article about an African woman who had given birth to um, 10 children. Right. And um, it, it talked um talked about and, and other ch and it started giving other examples of other people who had had all of these multiple births um, and it's not 10 children you know in sequence this is 10 children at one time oh yeah. right. wow yeah and, um, so you know it went into the guinness book of records of different people yeah but there was there was a woman that she had um three sets of um quad quad triplets and she had four um sets of triplets and six sets of twins and so my mind automatically put that how how do i put that into an algebraic formula formula and not so i was trying to work out how many children she had but instead of just adding it up in my head, I wanted to do it algebraically and put that into a formula. So I put um, Q for quadruplets and I used R for triplets and T for twins. So that came out to three Q, which is three sets of, um, was it quadruplets? Okay. Plus, four R, four sets of triplets, plus six T, which is six sets of twins. And so then using Sister Tina's PEMDASH, right, had to work out what was inside the brackets first, 
So that became, <laughs> it, that became three times four plus four times three plus six times two, which was 12 plus 12 plus 12, which is 36 children. Mm. And then there was the, they said the one that was um, in history that they, that of a woman that had the most children was a woman who had four sets of, um, was it four sets of quadruplets, seven sets of triplets, and 16 sets of twins. Damn. So that's four <laughs> plus four plus four times four plus seven times three plus 16 times two, which is 16 plus 21 plus 32, which is 69 children. Which is amazing. It's more than amazing. <laughs> but what amazed me even more was the fact that I worked out how to put that into an algebraic expression. Wow. And come up with the right answer. Wow. That is amazing. I got I got I got a, I got I got some energy went straight up my spine just then. That's incredible. And the mother is still alive. <laughs> and that's amazing too but i'm just you know i'm just looking at how the system you know worked out the math but that's a superwoman on both levels right right the, the second one that's 27 pregnancies mm -hmm. <laughs> good god almighty yeah. <laughs> a hell of a woman i tell you that mm -hmm. <laughs> but but it just bears witness though to um you know, like you said, the scientists coming to teach us and how it's coming up from, from ourselves um, as, as we study more of the teaching, more of the tech, it's changing the way in which we think, not just the way, of course, thinking leads to action. So it's changing the way we think, which changes the way we act. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. That was all. Oh, that was all. That was that was a lot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> praise be to a lot. That was absolutely wonderful. All praise. I'm talking about. I I I love that. That that just my whole day is good now. <laughs> Sister Tina. Yes, ma'am. Sister Ani is that. That that was that was that was something different for sure. Um, that was good. Uh, I wanted to um, just say that I am getting cognitions regarding this portion of the class mm -hmm. for a study that um, for a particular study that I'm on, and uh, <laughs> also cognitions regarding what the minister gave us as a gift on his birthday evening. So, um, so yes, sir. I just wanted to say I am getting cognitions. Do, do, do you you going to keep that to yourself, or you, you want to share with the rest of the class? <laughs> well, the, uh, <laughs> regarding regarding the minister's birthday gift. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what I'm talking. Um, about. Yes, uh, he um, he uh, in talking about. Let me see the the part where I wrote this down. Um. Uh. The earth, okay, when you talk about our purpose and um, in the teachings, uh, our purpose is to become one with the law because we're born with a predetermined goal to be, become one with the law. That's in the study guides. Anybody remember that in the study guides? Yeah. We're born with, with a predetermined goal. Mm -hmm. we, we have a predetermined goal. So that's our purpose and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is um, proof of that. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is proof of that. And we are to pattern our lives after him. So we are to become proof of that, becoming one with Allah. And um, so coming out of our orbit, when we, um, how was that worded? Uh, takes me a while. It says, 
if the earth were to alter its motion, it would lose its balance and leave its orbit. So, and what the minister said to us on his birthday night about Niggerville, you know, <laughs> yeah. he says, some of us live in Niggerville. So that's definitely out of our orbit. Yes, ma'am. You know, so he says, um, some have learned and they moved out of Niggerville, you know, so how we, um, uh, whatever description he gave of the characteristics of those who live in Niggerville, their desires and all that, uh, that's, you know, what we have to learn to get rid of in order to move out of Niggerville. So it just made me think of Niggerville. <laughs> <laughs> Praise be to Allah. That's that's abs absolutely wonderful. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you all yeah, to I'm, Allah. I'm giving up my apartment in Niggerville myself. <laughs> and I just wanted to thank uh, Brother Martin uh, for his comment the the last class um, when he talked about having a change of the way we look at something and to and when we were talking about I was talking about the fasting look at it as a, as a lifestyle change. And so I started doing that. And other things, you know, um, I've been able to fight, you know, um, more steadily by looking at it as a lifestyle change. You know, Master Farah came to make us new, to make us different, you know, to make us the rulers. So I can't say that I'm going to be the same person and do the same things when he came to make us different. So it is definitely a lifestyle change. So yes. I wanted to thank him. All praise is due to Allah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Brother Martin, for making that statement. <clears throat> yes, yes. Uh, Sister Zakia. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Zakia. Wa alaikum salam. Y'all are some scientists on here. Um, and I feel like a baby just listening to y'all. But I didn't want to waste a thought I had when you were speaking in reference to um, the scientists. And so my thought was, could it be a eighth unit approaching as we get closer to understanding who we are and what we can manifest and produce? Um, you know, us as MGT and, you know, woman of God, we are supposed to master our seven units. And basically our units are jobs. And so the eighth unit, and I'm thinking just by listening to y'all, I was like, wow, I wonder if this can even happen, you know, God on earth. Every time we give birth, we're producing that with aim and purpose and not just, you know, just carrying the name. Um, so I know y'all can probably take that and do something with it. That I just didn't want to waste that thought that I, that came to my mind. But that was all. Well, praise be to Allah. That's that's called increasing the diameter of your thinking to increase the circumference of your activity. That's a, that's another thought. Praise be to Allah. Thank you, Sister Zakia. Thank you. Sister Melanie. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Um, what, what I had been thinking, what, well, what came to mind as we're talking about this is that we are taught that, you know, a lot is going to be, or is not, a lot is the first, first perfect God. Because I was saying, as we were talking about orbits and access, what came to mind was the wobble, that, that the earth is not perfect, there's a wobble, that we are not perfect that everything in the universe has that wobble and that Allah will be the first Allah, Master Farad Muhammad will be the first Allah that will be perfect. And through him, we will be the first perfect people. And so then I was thinking about this process that we're going through that, you know, the study that we're undertaking, the understanding of the teachings that we have, um, to look deeper into them, because I've always said, as I've grown up and grown in Islam, that you know the teachings I looked at them almost like 
I used to say it's like Alice in Wonderland. How how deep does the hole go? And it's like the more you go down, the more you understand. You you did not understand the more you learn. Mm -hmm. And so understanding our lessons, the problem book, all of it, and then adding the Dianetics, which Brother Minister gave us. And, and it's like, you know, that's what's been laid out. That's what has is being laid out for us because that's how we will become that perfect people. It's going to be by doing the work. And, and as we're here on this and as we're studying, it came to mind that this is the work that we have to do on ourselves in order to become that perfect people because it's not going to be an average cadabra. Yes, ma'am. You know? It, it, it's going to take work on our pots and 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 brother minister between what the messenger has given us and the teachings that he got from master farad muhammad and the lessons in the problem book and then brother minister married it for the term with the dianetic tech and how that is freeing our minds and our souls and our hearts to really understand what we've been given it's giving us a better understanding and and, and we're going deeper down the down down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, I just think it's beautiful. I mean, that's the answer that for me, that's the answer because that's, what's going to help us be who we are supposed to be. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sister Melanie. Praise be. Yes, Wonderful. Sister Peggy. Okay. As-salamu alaykum. Okay. So our brother, you, you asked us to look up the word plane. And mm -hmm. so at the end of that exercise, you mentioned that there in English, there are a lot of homonyms. Mm -hmm. And so there is a woman by the name of Laurel Arishia. And she said it is her purpose to raise the vibratory, um, to, re to raise the vibration of English so that it's not so hostile. And, and part of it is looking at word etymologies. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you look at the word Job, which is in the Bible, we know about Job, then Job is Hebrew for persecuted. And then when we go on our jobs, do we not feel persecuted? <laughs> and it seemed like it was just a joke or a pun, but it isn't because mm -hmm. you have to study that, uh, those words like the word weak at the beginning of the week you, you know, you're on this job and you're persecuted. And so by the end of the week, you are W-E-A-K, you are very weak. And so now you, <laughs> so that's the cognition that I got when you talked about that. Excellent, excellent. So, so would that be in line with the use of language to, uh, it, it's called spelling, meaning casting spells on people? Yes, she's the one that wrote that book. Who? Imagine. Oh, she wrote that book. Magic, uh, something about words and magic. Her name is Laurel, Laurel Aricia. Okay. Uh, Sister Sultana, didn't you send a video, something dealing with the concept of spells and spelling? Can you hear me, Sister Sultana? Yes, I was driving. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, yes, sir. I did send you something on the, about that subject. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, I did. Yep. It was very interesting mm -hmm. that it came up right when you had mentioned that um, yeah. that particular she, meeting. She, you had mentioned spells, and then I, I, that video just came across, and I was like, "Wow, perfect timing." Yes, ma'am. Perfect timing. So what I'll do is I will send that. It, it, matter of fact, uh, well, she's driving. Um, I will try to see if I can post that mm. on the in the chat before we we end. That way we all have it. Uh, Sister Denise. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I'll be real quick. I, as I, as we were talking, I thought of the university that we enrolled in when we came into the nation and we enrolled into the University of Islam. And, you know, we got the actual facts and things like that. But, I, you know, I was looking at the expansion of the University of Islam, not just for the children, but for the adults. Remember, he said he wants something dealing with the adults as well. 
uh, in the university, but I was saying when, when the minister got everything out of him, and I thought about we really sometimes don't know what's in us, all that's in us, and, uh, and how the messengers say you can have heaven while you live at once. And the sister saying work is what will get us to whatever we want and how we describe what heaven was in the messengers teaching. I, that no, no one has graduated from the University of Islam when we enrolled. So however long we, we've been in the, you know, in the, in the nation, the foundation, that's how long we've been enrolled into the University of Islam. And people take courses at different times. They might be 70 or uh, 80, but they still taking courses you, because our mind is, should be expanding. So mm -hmm. as you were talking, I thought about, I don't recall no one ever graduating from the University of Islam, you know, once we enrolled in it. Mm -hmm. It's like, you never, you never leave, you know, you just keep learning. Mm -hmm. You know, the universe, the orbit, the, you know, what the earth really stands for. And that's where my mind went. Yes, sir. Thank you. No, that's no, you're very welcome. And that's that's perfect because Mother Tanetta Muhammad once said in an uh, uh, um, video, the question was asked, does Master Farah Muhammad still study? And the response is yes. He's constantly pulling things up. Uh, he's constantly pulling things up. So if if he is still studying, then what does that say about us? Mm -hmm. We don't have no excuse <laughs> because we're still in the kindergarten of his wisdom. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Sister Anya. Um, one of the sisters mentioned um, the about the wobble in, in our motion. Um, or the wobble in the motion of of the um, the um, the planets, and um, it, it started me on a course of um, thought um, and connecting to an earlier thought I had when you was asking us about the definition of plane, and um, in one of the definitions for orb is. Um, a, like a globe, um, a, a spherical body, a circle, um, a, you know, something that is round. And in order to uh, work out um, the, the, you know, the dimensions or um, circumference, diameter, and that of a circle, you have to put in um, in the into the formula pi, which is three point one four or um, 22 over seven. Mm -hmm. it, in any calculation dealing with the circle, you have to use pi. And I always have thought of that as being that, um, as pi being that which compensates for the wobble because we're taught that nothing is perfectly round. And so in order to calculate that you would have to put in pi. Um, so I saw that always as a compensation. Um, but I thought of it on another level that in order for, for as we, if we, if you, um, if you're traveling around a central point that, and if we're looking at that central point being Allah, Allah now becomes that 3.14, or that 22 over seven that count that compensates for the wobble in our motion and keeps us in orbit as long as we continue to focus on central point. And it's when we don't focus on that, that's when we come off balance as it, as it was saying in the study guide that we get off balance. Um, so we, we connect to that and I don't really have the exact phrase, maybe you can remember it, that I believe it was Mother Tainetta, or it may be in, I'm not sure if it was in Theology of Time where it talks about 
a, um, travel, a means of, a method of travel, traveling in orbs. Yes. yes. And then you often may hear um, people who have claimed that they've seen UFOs describe them as orbs. Mm -hmm. And um, in the, when we were talking about plane, the definition of plane, well, one of its um, most obvious definition, definitions is a vehicle that allows you, that transports you through the air. And um, so when you're talking about being transported through air, you're also talking about um, travel like waves in which um, thought waves, communication waves, speech, um, our hearing, all of those travel through the air waves. Mm -hmm. um, so now you have communication and tr being a, a vehicle that transports you from one location to another at a high altitude. Mm -hmm. So when we mount up on, on our lessons and with this supreme wisdom in our brain, in our mind, then we're traveling where it causes us, our brains to oscillate Again, you have rotation and vibration mm -hmm. um, to oscillate at a very high rate of speed, it speeds up our thinking and our thoughts, improves our speech. And, um, and so now we're traveling mentally, spiritually at a, at a higher altitude than we were before we were introduced to these teachings. Um, so I, I was just connecting all of that, um, the plane and the orb, and then it, it uses the phrase that we are inclined to the 23 and a half degrees to the plane of the orbit. So um, again, you have that, tra that, that's that connection again, that when we incline ourselves to these teachings, mm we're able to mount up on wings and fly at that high altitude um, as long as we stay in uh, um, orbiting around Allah as the central point. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm loving it. Now, when you look at 3.14, compensating the wobble, could we say that the teachings came to compensate for the wobble? Could we say that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I, yes, want us sir. To, I want us to either, you can mock this up in your mind or draw it on paper, but write down the number 3.14. Okay. So now you look at the number 3.14. Now beneath that 3.14, I just want you to write 314 with no no decimal point and put and put a forward slash between the one and the four. And what do you get? What fraction do you get? Separate the three, separate the three and put a forward slash between the one and the four. What number do you get? Three and a four. Three and a quarter. What's, what's the significance of the three and a quarter? The amount of time. Hello? Huh? The amount of time that the Savior taught the, the messenger. And that compensated for our wobble, didn't it? It sure did. Mm. Go ahead, Sister yeah. I love it. Compensate that pie is a compensation for the wobble. Mm. Brother Wadu, you see what you started, brother? Maybe you can't come on. Let's, 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 let's go ahead and finish this. Uh, I'm sorry, brother. I'm at work. And, uh, I understand. I'm I understand. To listen as I <laughs> sure. Yeah, mm. brother. Thank you for this topic, brother. Mm. 
All Thank praise you. belongs to Allah. Yeah. Please make sure I'm able to uh, re-listen to it uh, at some point in the near future. I'm gonna I'm gonna index it and put it on the YouTube channel today, uh, inshallah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. I have to go now. I'm yes, sorry. sir. Brother. Well, thank you, bro. You did you you did your you did your assignment. You 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 produced this topic for us, and and, and I know I can speak for the room, I believe, but I know I'm loving it. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All praise is due to Allah. Okay. There's a part two on Sunday, correct? <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about going a little deeper into this, brother, because th this is just this is just pregnant with uh, with with the data. Because I did have one one comment on the um, portion that I heard early uh, from the Holy Quran. I think you said it was Surah 36, verse 40. Yes, sir. And as I read that, it said in their orbit floating and then uh, thinking that floating we uh, we equate it with uh ships that are mentioned in the holy quran floating on um and floating being that that operative word that kind of stood out for me and it's relevant to uh, the planet floating and and how that may connect with water oh well, we're going to connect that with dianetics too brother because that's already that's already in one of the slides we're about to cover so that's very to a lot. Yeah, that's very relevant, brother. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Islam, sir. Okay, so an orbit, <clears throat> an orbit could represent a thought, an idea, or a work that allows one to manifest their purpose. Does that make sense? Because if we're in our orbit, then aren't aren't we in harmony with the sun? Mm -hmm. So aren't we, so whatever is the center of our orbit, then we're in harmony with that central point, correct? Right. Okay, so we know Allah is the true center of everything. So in, in finding our purpose, our purpose really is harmonizing us with the origin of our existence. Does that make sense? Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Let's keep it going. So a work or a mission that brings one a sense of peace. Oh, wait a minute. Had a little snafu of my computer here. Back. Okay, how did that happen? Can I go back one? Okay, there we go. Let me go back this way. Okay. 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 So now when you look at the actual ayat from the Holy Quran, neither is it for the sun to overtake the moon, nor can the night outstrip the day and all float on in an orbit. So this is where I got the Arabic word for orbit and the word for float that Brother Wadu just mentioned. The word float also means to swim but it also means in Arabic to praise Allah. So when we find our purpose, when we are in our orbit, when we are floating, that is our way of giving praise to Allah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And in, yes, the word, in the terminology of Dianetics, they have what's called the floating needle. Does that make sense? And the floating needle means that you are in peace, you are in harmony. So when you so when we are floating in our orbit, that means on one level, we are engaged in a work that manifests our purpose. It harmonizes us with Allah. So as people say, oh brother, that's powerful. So that was deep. And we say, well, all praise is due to Allah. As long as we give the praise to Allah, like the minister said, not some praise, but all the praise. Alhamdulillah, we're not talking about giving some praise to Allah, right? And as we give praise to Allah, what does he do? 
he continues to elevate us in whatever field of study we involve ourselves in, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. He does. Now, when you look at the word orbit, the word orbit in Arabic is phallican, comes from the root, the root word phallic, which means celestial sphere, a star, a circuit. And the, the term ilm al phallic means astronomy. Okay. So can we see how floating in an orbit could be like used as a demo kit to illustrate us being in harmony with Allah and manifesting our gifts and talents and manifesting that which Allah placed in us before our birth, that we can manifest our purpose in order to praise Allah? Does, can we see that? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, Sister Jaslyn. Yes, sir. I, um to look my family as you were speaking um it makes me think about the study guys that the honorable minister farrakhan gave us mm -hmm. and it from just from from my perception because we are so out of orbit he had to give us dynetics so that we could be better at our self-analysis and self-examination and self-correction because we're so aberrated we couldn't even appreciate the study guide because if we're studying ourselves then, then we are studying a lot and and as we study a lot and understand ourselves then we'll be in a better position to um be a community you know to do the development but because we're so out of orbit we can't even you know bring the nation into its fruition as Allah wants it to be. So, but he, the Mr. Farrakhan already gave us like the technology, but I just feel like because we were so out of orbit, we couldn't appreciate it and in, in actually be in obedience to manifest that self-improvement. So mm -hmm. hopefully inshallah is, you know, we get into this Dianetics where we'll, we can revisit it with a clearer mind where we can where we can manifest it and actually build a nation. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And and what you said is exactly what the minister said in the in that video where he speaks in Los Angeles. He says it's like we had a safe full of uh, treasure. I think he said, but we had lost the combination. Correct. So so really, right now, what I'm striving to do, and this is this is going to be a work. But I've, I've started on study guide number two. What I'm striving to do now is go through the study guides and, and, and marry it with the Dianetic tech. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm striving to do. So, so it allows us to reintroduce ourselves to the study guide uh, material, self-improvement. But then now we can look at it from the standpoint of, okay, now let's apply it. Let's really apply it to the science, you know, look at it from the aspect of the science of the mind and we can actually use self-improvement from many different aspects. But you, you 100% right and exact, Sister Jaslyn. Mm -hmm. We've had the, we've had the, we've had the self-improvement for years, but have so, but where have we gone with it? Right, exactly. Okay. So, yes, sir. Uh, let me go back here, here, and okay. Okay, did I? Oh, okay, I know what happened. Okay, so here's where the PowerPoint ends, but let me pull up this one little video. I wanted to, the video is only a minute and 15 seconds long. Um, let's see if I can pull it up real quick. Uh, here, here, and uh that's is that part one or is this okay i think this is it oh this is it okay okay so here's the first video i'm going to show the video and then i'm going to ask us to share what we see within as we watch this video. It's only a minute, 15 seconds long, so it should be all right.
So contrary to what you see in movies, spacecraft can't just sit around in space near a planet because they'd fall right into it. To stay in space, we need to get into orbit. So first, we take off from Earth's surface, fly up past the atmosphere, and keep accelerating more and more so that we start looping around Earth before we could fall back into it. Now we're in orbit. This is where we're in zero G because even though we're still pulled downwards, we're just sort of free falling back onto our own trajectory. Now, for example, to get to the moon, we need to point forward and fire our engines to expand our orbit until it intersects with the moon's path. Now, even though the moon's gravity is starting to pull us in, we still need to flip around and burn our engines in reverse to slow down and get into orbit. At this point, we can pick a spot to land, burn our engines against our trajectory, and come down to the surface. So that's it for now, guys. Just something you can share with a friend who wants to learn more about space travel without all the fancy math or terminology. Thanks for watching, and check the comments section for more details, and stay tuned for more videos. Okay, now, did anyone get any, any, any cognitions, any thoughts, anything come to mind as you're watching that small little clip? If not, I'll share. Go ahead, Sister Peggy. Cognition I got was about Katherine Johnson and how she helped uh, determine the trajectory of how so that Glenn could get back in from space back to the Earth. You're talking about hidden figures? Katherine Johnson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I'm saying you're talking about like that from the from the movie as well. That's but well, yeah, there is a movie about her and two of her friends. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but that's what she did. She helped him get back to the planet Earth. She he was not on the moon, he was orbiting. So she helped him get back. That's what I thought about when you okay. about the trajectory. Anyone else? Wait, it was yes, his. sir. Oh, go ahead, Sister Charlotte. <laughs> And, and, and I'm not sure if it totally relates, but for me, as I was watching the rocket go in orbit, it made me look at sometimes it appears for me that I'm going backwards and losing ground, but I'm still I'm still in the process. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at it from a a, a, a different view, but I'm I'm still in the process. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. As long as we stay in motion, mm -hmm. yeah. Sister Melanie. So I'm like, that's exactly what I thought as well because you know it's a, the, the the plane goes up, but just because you know the the, the well not the plane but the the the, the um, ship the spaceship goes up. But just because it's up, it's not in orbit. And if there's not movement, that you will actually crash. And so there has to be that movement in order for you to continue on. So just because we're on the path, just because we joined the nation, that doesn't mean that we're actually, we have to move. We can't just come in and just sit and not, you know, and be, you know, <laughs> have to be movement. Otherwise, we will crash. So that's what I thought of. Yes, ma'am. We got to work, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, we got we to gotta do the work for our own salvation. Uh, a, a law does not change the condition of a people until they change their own condition. So who's going who's gonna to save, who's gonna save Sister Melanie? Sister Melanie better get to work and save Sister Melanie. <laughs> the minister has given us the tools. He mm -hmm. has given us the mathematics. He has given us the wisdom by the grace of Allah th through the uh, Most High Elijah Muhammad and the Savior. But we can't just par if we just parakeet the wisdom, then we're just a jackass carrying a book, aren't we? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. But that's yeah. Yeah, you got to do <laughs> that. Was that was good? You got to do the work, Sister Belinda. Uh, mine was pretty much along those same lines. I had thought of lining up with the law, Master Farad Muhammad, get up to speed, uh -huh. then sink. That's what came to me as I watched it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Sister Anya. The, 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 Sister Anya is going to be our, um, I got to, I got to get her, I got to give her, the, I got to give this scientist another. Uh, Made me forget my thought. 
Go ahead, Sister Anya. Um, so what it made me think of was that um, as long as, okay, you could be in orbit it, because we all have an orbit, orbit, we all have a central point. Mm -hmm. But if, if you don't add anything to it, then you're just going to stay in that same orbit. So it's not until you have a goal to reach for mm. that it will make you change your orbit. So in order to get the moon to the moon, mm -hmm. it had mm -hmm. to widen, it had to change the um, widen its orbit until it could actually connect with the orbit of the moon and then it was able to get into the moon's orbit. Um, so so that's, that's what it made me think of there is that we have to, um, and Allah comes and, okay, I guess you could say liken us to dust. We were just hanging around here, not doing the same old thing over and over, still being obedient to, you know, the overseer, the mass, the massa, and still thinking that we were nothing and never could be nothing until Master Fab Muhammad came and introduced a new goal for us, for, for us to reach out to now that we could be something that, you know, um, and then once we started reaching, it changed, our orbit changed. It expanded our orbit. And and now we've we've come into a new um, we're we're traveling now at a different rate of speed, like Sister Belinda mentioned, about the different changing our speed. Um, and I guess I, it, this the part of um, slowing down and reversing. I guess I could see that as um, it says: think, reflect, then get up and do. So like the sister said, we had to work, but we have to think and reflect to, and sometimes about um, the orbit that we've traveled. Um, are we still in sync? Do we need to, um, you know, add anything in addition here? How can we speed up the process? Are we moving too slow? You know, you know those type of things so that we can, close the gap between us and the minister and then between us and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and us and Allah, mm -hmm. as it says in closing the gap. Now, it's interesting that you said you meant to close the gap. I'm a, we get done, I'm gonna play the second video and you're gonna understand the second video as a demo kit with regards to closing the gap. But I also want to say this one other point, Sister Anya. When you talk about Allah creating us from dust, you're coming out of, again, that's study guide number two, question number one. And I'm going to give this, and if Sister Belinda could post this in the, uh, the, ch the chat, the definition for end phenomena, if you could, please, Sister Belinda. When you look at study guide number two, uh, building human potential, <laughs> And you look at question number one, the minister speaks about the pilgrimage, the resurrection, and he mentions Genesis chapter two, verses seven. And I'm just gonna put this out here and then you can study this on your own because this is a whole nother Zoom meeting topic. But when you look at the word resurrection and pilgrimage in Arabic, and then you look at the word end phenomena in Dianetics, these statements have ARC. Okay, so if I'm just gonna read this real quick and then we're gonna move on to the next video and I'm gonna take Sister Denise and then we're gonna end it. But it says end phenomena, those indicators in the PC and meter which show that a chain or process is ended. It shows in Dianetics that basic, it shows in Dynex that basic on that chain has been erased and in Scientology that the PC has been released on the process being run. So wouldn't that be the same as a pilgrimage or resurrection? Meaning we've completed the journey 
O soul that is at rest? Isn't O soul at rest the same as the end phenomena? It says the chain has been erased and it says that the process is ended. And there's four things that show you that you've reached the end phenomena. One, there's again, here we are, that floating needle, floating in orbits, yes. Floating needle, cognition, very good indicators, meaning the PC is happy, high on tone level, in a ratio of the final picture audited. It says uh, the zero to four Scientology end phenomena, and it goes back to those things again. But when you look at the floating needle cognition and being very happy, wouldn't that be the end result of a pilgrimage or a resurrection? Can we see how all this ties together, has agreement with one another? Can we see that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Sister Denise. Um, yes, sir. Go ahead, Sister Denise. I was thinking, you know, my thoughts was running so fast. I, I thought if I, I was wondering, um, so is that like the, the end of the journey? Or or is it, I was thinking about every level, you know, you, uh, and, and, and Sunday, you, you know, um, the class was talking about um, going past 40.0. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, you know, up there with the gods, I I, I believe I, I heard you say, or somebody say that. Um, um, so I was wondering about these tools that the minister gave, gave us, which is dynamics. It's so n no one stops at certain levels, you know, when you go and you in that orbit, mm -mm. but it's. It's it's other orbits, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I was thinking about tools, and and I know I know how to use a hammer, okay, but I don't know how to use a metal hammer. And when when my husband gathered his tools, I said, "What are you gonna do now?" He, I said, "What do you need that for?" <laughs> you know, and he had different tools for different jobs. Yes, ma'am. And thought about dynetics and the study guys and all of these tools that we have uh to to help us get to the next orbit and and the next orbit and mm -hmm. you know we just keep going up the tone scale where uh after 40 it's it's unlimited can i say that can tone, i say tone 40 is just an arbitrary number but l ron hubbard has said that tone 40 is not the limit there's there's way beyond tone 40 but that's just a number that was used oh okay okay but yes, you have sir. To be right. so, yes. yes sir where we we're constantly reaching higher thought and then i thought about the plane and me being in the airplane and at first everything is right there with me but once uh the plane goes up and up everything becomes so small you know, where when I look down, it looks like little ants. And then I look down again and it looks like one of the, the maps that all I can see is the little roads in. And it's like nothing bothers you at that level. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you are in the plane. So that's what I was thinking about. And if you shooting out to the moon, I mean, you know, what's going to come at you as fast as you're moving? Uh, you know, no one want to come somebody moving that fast as a matter of fact they just get out the way and just let you <laughs> just go higher you know go as high as you can which is one of our provisional for our constitution for the female to go as high as her god-given right you know as god gives to her she goes higher and higher that's yeah. what i was thinking about thank you so so are you saying that if you're on the earth something might look large but as you get further and further from the earth and go higher up in the atmosphere what used to be big now looks small is that what you're saying yes sir or, so that or don't that the more the more information and more knowledge you incorporate yeah. the smaller your problems begin the the, the, the problems be, uh become smaller 
Yes, sir. Until it just, you don't see it anymore. Hmm. Kind of like putting the devil around our pinky and we wouldn't even know he's there unless we looked at him. Exactly. Because we, we look at him because we in somebody else's orbit. But when we get, <laughs> when we get, and get into, uh, the minister says, start, start practicing being God. Hmm. You know, this is, this is a big thing here, being God, practicing it, mm -hmm. you know, postulate, see if it, if it, if it, what we postulate, if it comes to, to pass, you know, come to the future, rather, rather, you know, yes, sir, absolutely, you know, we're that rocket that's going up, trying to adjust to being in a different atmosphere. Hmm. And we said the minister has his own atmosphere. He comes, I mean, when he comes, I, it's just like T.D. Jake said, he didn't He didn't want to come behind the minister. <laughs> you know, it's like, what I got to say after after he comes, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, that's it. Let's drop the mic. Let's drop the mic. So that's, <laughs> that's thinking about, well, you know, as because he's not a show off, you know, is that that is is that humility? I was so honored that he shared his birthday with us. Ninety mm -hmm. years. I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, we're we're looking at 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 someone who started out, you know, just like we all do, but he was determined. And so, a wonderful example of how we can get out of our orbit, get into what we have and we and we got all types of tools not just a regular saw you know we have an electric saw we have uh you know all types of tools that he's given us if we're listening to him that we can use you know to get into the next orbit mm -hmm. yes sir that's all i have thank Raise you thank you go ahead sister anya Um, another thought too about um, the, the that um, video that you showed and the changing from one orbit to the other um, was the electron and um, mm -hmm. you know the movement of the electrons, how they bombard one another, um, and in order to um, change to be a different element, um, it has. It, um, it, it has to give up an electron, and it and it it it's um, passed over to the next atom. It takes on um, that electron. Mm -hmm. So, so I I thought about that too because that I saw that in the coming out of the Earth orbit to get into the Moon's orbit, how it's it, it reminded me of that electron being passed over. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure there's, um, if, if we're gonna do a part two, that probably um, we could delve into that more. I'm sure there's much more to be discovered there. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But those electrons actually sit in what's called orbitals around the nucleus. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And then um, another thought was in the word orbit itself, um, you have the word orb, of course, mm -hmm. but then you have, it or IT and IT is information technology. <laughs> yes. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Information technology. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Well, thank you definitely, Sisania. Brother Eric. We can't hear you, brother Eric. You're, you're not on mute, but we can't hear you. If, if you can type, if you can, if it's a question, if you could type it into the chat. But you're, you're not on mute, but yeah, we can't hear you, Brother Eric. Let me see if there's, no, there's nothing on my end. Uh, nope. All right. Anyone else before we wrap it up? 
Okay. Let me go back and just show you what I saw. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> So contrary to what you see in movies, spacecraft can't just sit around in space near a planet because they'd fall right into it. Okay, so the first thing, I, I, I saw the same thing you saw. You, you can't, we can't sit still. If we sit still, then there's no movement, then we just fall into the Earth. So, so now, let's look at that. If you sit still and you fall into the Earth, if we have the Earth, we have the atmosphere, and then we have outer space. How does that relate to the tone scale? How can we line that up with the tone scale? So if we're sitting around in the atmosphere, wouldn't that be tone 2.5 or, or being idle? Could the Lord. earth... Could then the Earth represent tone 2.0 and below? Because if we sit around and do nothing, what happens? We go down tone, correct? Right. So the whole goal is if we're if we're in 2.5, the atmosphere, if we keep working, then that takes us where? Tone 3.0 and above, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we have the Earth, we have the atmosphere, and we have outer space. Can we say that that lines up with the tone scale, the three the three levels of the tone scale? Yes. Yes. Okay. Does everyone see that? Does that make sense? To stay in space, we need to get into orbit. So first, we take off from Earth's surface, fly up past the atmosphere, and keep accelerating more and more, so that we start looping around Earth. Okay, we have to excel, correct? Mm -hmm. What does the word excel? We know what acceleration means to go faster, but if we clear the word excel, what does the word excel also mean? To excel in a subject means to become great or to study or to get a higher understanding of something, correct? Right. So then would that imply that in our study, in our work, that's what keeps us from being idle and falling back to the earth. That's what keeps us in an orbit in, in the space, correct? The high tone level, yes? Before we could fall back into it. Now we're in orbit. This is where we're in zero G because even though we're still pulled downwards, we're just sort of free falling back onto our own trajectory. Okay, zero G. Zero G means zero gravity. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it said, even though the gravity's still pulling, because the vehicle stays in motion, the gravity doesn't pull it back, correct? Mm -hmm. Can someone right. pull, word, pull up the word gravity in the dictionary real quick? Someone pull up the word gravity in the dictionary. Anyone got it? Who has it? Gotcha. Is, I, is it Melanie? Okay. It says gravity, the force of attraction by which terrestrial bodies tend to fall toward the center of the earth. Mm -hmm. Gravitation in general, heaviness or weight, and seriousness of a critical uh, nature. Okay. So I think yeah. the force of attraction by which terrestrial bodies tend to fall toward the center of the earth. Okay, so now look at that. Gravity also, it comes from the root, the root word is the same root word as grave. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. and, and the word grave and gravity bring you to what's called a serious problem. So mm -hmm. when the earth becomes the center of our attention, come on now, we gravitate towards the earth, correct? Yes, sir. But it says Allah is the true center of all things. So we can't we can't have Allah as the center and the earth as the center at the same time, correct? Right. So even though the gravity pulls on this spacecraft while it's in its orbit, as long as the spacecraft stays in motion, the gravity doesn't have the effect. Yes? Mm -hmm. 
what, so what does that teach us? As long as we continue to work and do what we need to do with regards to our purpose or our orbit, then we don't have time to deal with falling back to the earth and getting involved in, you know, whatever our shortcomings or defects are. And, and it's going to happen because we're imperfect because we have a wobble in our in our nature, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we come back to the earth, what do we got to do? We just got to launch the spacecraft again, right? Yes. Back, get back in the ship and, 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 and try to launch again, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, for example, to get to the moon. We need to point forward and fire our engines to expand our orbit until it intersects. Now, in order to get to the moon, isn't that another another plane of existence? Mm -hmm. So in increasing its orbit, doesn't the shift have to increase? The ship has to increase the diameter mm -hmm. in order to increase its radius. So in the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, when we increase the diameter of our thinking, it increases the circumference of our activity and allows us to do what? To travel to higher planes of existence, yes? Mm -hmm. Right, yes, sir. That's what the moon's path. Now, even though the moon's gravity is starting to pull us in, we still need to flip around and burn our engines in reverse to slow down and get into orbit. At this point, we can pick a spot to land, burn our engines against our trajectory and come down to the surface. So now we find that next plane of existence, slow things down and we land on that, meaning what? Now we take the time to study this new concept or this new subject, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, do we, do we have maybe five more minutes? Yes, I'm with a video. I have another video that's about a minute long, but it ties in with something that Sister Anya spoke about with closing the gap. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Up in the air, and it travels in an arc where the speed's slowest at the top. Okay. Much like when you throw an object up in the air, and it travels in an arc where the speed's slowest at the top. In space, you'll be orbiting a body slower at your highest point and faster at your lowest point. And if you have the same orbital path as something else, that already means you're going at the same velocity. And speeding up or slowing down will actually mean you're just changing the shape of your orbit. So you can't actually catch up to something if you're orbiting on the same path. So you see this, you see this gap that's between these two ships? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because your velocities are fixed. Instead, you can just slow down to shrink your orbit, essentially creating a shortcut to intercept your objective, and then speed back up so that you stay in the same orbit. And if we're orbiting in a circle and we just want to get to a higher orbit, we need to first fire our engines forward to raise our orbit on the opposite end, and then wait until we reach that high point and fire our engines again. See them crescents that keep popping up as we're doing this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> to circularize it. So firing our engines directly towards the destination won't really work because we're already going really fast in a totally different direction. Instead, we want to just add to the velocity we've already gained and let gravity itself direct us to the destination. Okay. So, so can you see how we can use different aspects of mathematics and science as demo kits to allow us to study Allah, our relationship with Allah and the universe. And not only that, but doesn't it make learning a little more enjoyable and less hostile? Whereas we have like, now we have a desire. We, we want to learn more about certain subjects. Is that, does that, did anyone get that same feeling? Yeah. Did we all have our cognitions? Do we have our own notes that we wrote down with cognitions and questions that, that Allah blessed us to receive as we were going through this study? Yes, sir. Do we do we have case game? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Sister Anya. Uh, yes, sir. Um, your words just now made me think about um, what we have to do to catch up or close the gap in watching that little video that was so helpful. And when we get left behind, let's just say we're studying a subject in school and we get left behind. Um, maybe you've been out sick and you, you know, you just, you're not where the class is. So you have to do extra, what you have to, they said you have to accelerate 
until you can come back in alignment. So you do extra work to catch up on the missed assignments or you get a tutor who, you know, if, if you're not grasping the subject, then you get a tutor who can bring you up to speed until you back in, in the, um, you know, match the orbit of the rest of the class. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that was, um, that demo kit came to mind as you were talking. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. Beautiful. So, so I Sister Melanie. I'm like, um, um, what I thought with this video as well as the other, and it was just a generalization uh, uh, of a cognition. But when we were talking before about like the barriers to, to learning or to study, and I thought of these as giving us mass so that we could see, you know, the visualization using that as a demo, it gave us mass for some concepts that we were thinking about considering. Mm -hmm. So you gave us mass. Yes, ma'am. And, and that's the beauty of it. Um, what I do personally is whenever I, I come across the concept, I try to, I, I, this is how, you know, this is the language that I'm comfortable with. I try to look at it in the form of an equation. How can I use an equation to represent this concept? Because I, I like to memorize formula, where someone else might like to study chemistry. They might look and say, okay, how can I use the atom? in order to understand this concept. Someone else might say, well, how can I use the planets? But my thought is if we look at the problem book, the problem book gives us these problems almost like a toolbox of tools or demo kits. And then when we, once we understand our lessons, once we understand the problems in the problem book, we can say, you know what? That reminds me of problems such and such. How can I use that problem as a demo kit to understand this? And then I think what happens is it allows us, it makes memorization of our supreme wisdom and our lessons and our student enrollment easier. But now not only do we memorize it, but now it becomes applicable. So we have the theory and the practice. And I think each one of us, we might have different fields of mathematics and science that might that we might find appetizing. You know, some of us might like to study mathematics. Some of us might want to say, you know, I want to study astronomy, where someone else would say, you know what? I thought about studying quantum physics, but because I thought quantum physics was so difficult, I haven't taken the time to study. I think each one of us has a particular field of interest that's something that's that's in our nature but fear has kept us from going down that path and the goal is to remove the fear so that each one of us can manifest what level of mathematics and science really brings us peace and then we find that what do we find we find our orbit and that's what brings us balance me personally sitting at my desk going through math and science this is my prescription this is self-medication this is how i find my peace and I think each one of us has a path that we could find. Brother Eric, I did hear your voice there. So I think you are working. Yeah, I, I realized that it was, uh, I was working on it. I see it working now. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I hope you're okay. Okay, beautiful. Every, everybody spoke like a scientist. And in fact, everything was said that was very good. Uh, the point that I wanted to make is that in order to get into this field of teaching that you you are advancing with us, we have to go to number one a instruction by Master Farad Muhammad, and with that it will help us to understand a, the the path that we have to take. Most of us want to know about God, to hear from God, but we we are not following the direct instruction because the Lesson number one has to be read, studied, and understood. And at that point, when we start uh, casting out that devil in us, it will allow us to have our ears more open to the teaching of the Muslim Elijah Muhammad. And uh, the second thing is, Master Farad Muhammad came, he made a God, and he left him as his represented the Muslim Muhammad. So now, 
uh, the Muslim of Bilal Jamal had become the son among us. And at that point, uh, I don't know if you all remember when uh, he asked Master Farad Mohammed to teach him about the son. He said Master Farad Mohammed was a little bit edgy with him. And finally he said, the son is very near the center. So right there we were all talking about Master Farad Mohammed. Yes, he is that God, but he is the center of all the activities that are going to follow. So the son, being the Muslim of Elijah Muhammad, has a very close relationship to him. So that's why he's, he was very uh, near the center. So the Muslim of Elijah Muhammad, being the God that he was uh, and is, also made another God among us. So he left him as his representative. So now, are we going to make the same mistake that others uh, made? to deny him his, his uh, dues or, or to let the nation fall again. No, but uh, remember the messenger say, the nation will rise and never to fall again. And he said also, all he need is one to, to, to accept the teaching and he can rebuild the nation again over and over. So therefore I'm not worried about the nation falling. The other part we came is to the uh, uh, problem number 13. It says, after learning mathematics. Oh, that is a great uh, thing to say. After learning mathematics. <laughs> and you were uh, enumerating all the maths that we have. But as you uh, can see, there is a gradient to that math because I could not uh, be uh, one learning how to do arithmetic and think I could go into trigonometry or even to uh, a, a, any other thing. I cannot remember the trigonometry and all of that. So now when we learn uh, the gradients, you will find in each one of them, the principle that undergirds all of them is the principle of truth. Yes, sir. And when we say Islam is mathematics and mathematics is Islam, so both of the, and you say Islam is a religion of truth. So now mathematics also can only work with truth. So now this is the way Islam is mathematics. So after that, he introduced us to the lessons. But you mentioned orbit. As you can see, every planet stay in its own orbit, right? Uh, there is no who say, oh, let me bow a little bit uh, orbit from this one or that one, or let me steal a little bit. No, everyone knows its orbit and they all circulate around that orbit. And you were just showing how if you want to go to the moon, uh, you need to apply a certain uh, uh, principle that can allow you to, to increase your orbit so that you can go into the next sphere's orbit. But all of that is to see if we really want to stay true to this teaching and to the guidance, we have to know our own orbit because but the Lukman has a, its own orbit. So I can only follow what he's doing so that I can emulate his uh, example to get into a point where I can make my own orbit too because the whole universe is ours to, to, to study. And last and least, the, the master called us student. So now if you have to be a student, you have to study. And why are you study? You're studying lessons that can help you to grow in knowledge. And that knowledge when acquired, it gives you the wisdom that you need to apply uh, what you learn. And from there, you can get to the understanding that can make us the people, the perfect people that we all talked about. That's all I had to say today. That's, uh, thank you, Brother Eric. It's a pleasure. Oh, Sister, praise be Yes, sir. Sister Ani, did you have your hand up again or was that from last time? It was from last time, but I did have something um, just real quickly. Okay. It, it was it was just um, 
giving a pre appreciation to and um, all praise due to Master Farad Muhammad um, for his um, seeing up through time that even though he gave us these lessons, the, the um, supreme wisdom lessons for us to study, but in his infinite wisdom, he saw that we would also need this valuable tool of Dianetics um, to help us um, increase our speed. Mm -hmm. um, in, you know, that uh, he, he saw that we would have some difficulty in grasping these lessons and not grasp them quick enough um, to, to keep pace with the time in which we needed to um, uh, to be at a certain level at a certain time. So he set in motion um, a plan for us even back then that we would in this day and time be introduced to the Dianetics that would bring about that acceleration in us grasping these teachings. So again, all praise is due to Allah. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And the final, the final uh, question I'll ask the believers is this: If the believers have any subject or any topic that you like to see covered, you know, just as Brother Wadud made the suggestion about orbits, which actually brought us to the study of what we cover today. This is just, this was actually based on a suggestion by Brother Wadud. If anyone has any concepts mathematics, science, physics, you know, doesn't make any difference. You can either put those uh, suggestions in the chat or send me an email. And I take I take those suggestions as assignments I, and I take them very seriously. I will I will begin to study that with the help of Allah and try to see how we can marry this with the tech. Because for each one of us to have that question, in, in hitting our math and science in this way, who knows, this might be our, the path that we take towards clear. I don't know. But I know if we keep elevating up the tone scale and we keep getting attention units, and if we keep getting more theta and our tone is going to the point where we have a desire to learn different levels of mathematics and science, that means we, we're receiving case gain. We are going up the tone scale. And Allah is mentioned in the Holy Quran He's the, he's the exalter of ranks. He is the Lord of the ways of ascent, correct? And to me, that means he's the one that controls whether we can travel up the tone scale or not. And if we are getting case gain, then it's, it's as a result of the work we're putting in. And it's a result of, by Allah's grace, that we're, that we're increasing or going up towards that tone 40 and then beyond. So if there's any suggestions, please put it in the chat, please send it in the email. Um, and that is what we will use for future topics. By Allah's grace, I will strive to have this indexed uh, before the end of the day and on the YouTube channel so that we can go back and review it as we see fit. Uh, let's see, is this, uh, Sister Charlotte is not here. Okay, so we won't do the end of session. But with that being said and done, family, I thank you for your time and attention. I thank you for your patience. And I thought because we only had about eight or nine, um, I thought because we had only about eight or nine slides in the PowerPoint that the meeting would be about an hour and a half. But here we are at the three hour mark yet again. <laughs> so with that family uh thank you for your input your cognitions your energy your case game i look forward to seeing us all on sunday the 21st i don't know what the topic will be but i know by law's grace it will be something that will take us further into our study with that being said and done let us go ahead and close out in prayer <clears throat> attention prayer I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan 
In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, Lord of the Worlds, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, Master of the Day of Judgment in which we now live. Thee alone do we serve, thine aid do we seek. Please Allah, guide us on the straight path, the path upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, not the path upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray if they've heard thy teaching. Amen. Assalamu alaikum, family. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam, family. Wa alaikum salam.